Welcome back to The Daily Brief. Thank you for joining us. Of course, remember, keep interacting with us in case you've got a new update for us from where you are. The question today is, what is happening where you are? Hashtag is K24 Daily Brief. So yes, keep telling us on Twitter as well as Facebook. Our handles are at K24 TV. For now, let's get right into the diary of the day. Now, Interior CS Fred Matiangi, accompanied by Principal Secretary Karanja Kibichu, Inspector General of Police, Hilary Mutiambai, and Director of Criminal investigations George Kinoti as well as director of public prosecutions Nurdin Haji will this morning unveil a state-of-the-art 3500 XL genetic analyzer at the government's chemist department headquarters next to the Kenyatta National Hospital moving on we've got a, a story from West Pokot deputy governor who has where a petitioner has filed an application before the devolution committee challenging the prolonged absence of the West Pokot deputy governor Dr Nicholas Awonga Awon Atudonyang from West Pokot. Now the petitioner will be appearing before the committee this morning at 11 to seek clarification on the continued stay in outside the country by Atudonyang who is Governor Professor John Donyangapuo's. Uh, Atudonyang is based in the US and is rarely seen in West Pokot. So yes, questions arising of course regarding where he's been. Moving on, Machaka's Governor Dr. Alfred Mutua is this morning officially opening the Machaka Machakos Cancer and Research Facility at the Machakos Level 5 Hospital. Now the centre is the first of its kind by a county government and will offer free pathology, laboratory and chemotherapy services. Governor Mutua says the county has hired a team of oncologists and other specialists to serve at this particular facility. Of course this comes at a time when cancer has now become uh, a crisis and continues to affect the lives of very many Kenyans. Moving on, the National Assembly's Sports, Culture and Tourism Committee is on a two-day retreat at the Hilton Garden Hotel in Nairobi to deliberate on the Gaming Bill 2019, which seeks to regulate betting and gaming activities. Now, Cabinet Secretaries Fred Matiangi of Interior, Joe Musheru of ICT and Treasuries Ukur Yatani are expected to give their input to the bill this morning at the same venue. And of course, bringing to you the latest regarding a census 2019 with the national population and housing census continues countrywide. The headcount, which kicked off on Saturday, has faced some challenges with the many urban dwellers yet to be enumerated. This exercise comes to an end on Saturday, the 31st of August. All right, of course, it's time for the news of the day. So, yes, we'll be giving you the latest regarding what's uh, happening here in Kenya. And, of course, the Kenya National Union of Teachers headquarters along Nairobi and Fangano Street has been broken in with looters. We've been having live pictures from our reporters regarding the same. We're also going to be bringing to you live pictures directly from the Kenya, um, of course, Kenya National Union of Teachers headquarters. Now, this comes amid leadership wrangles in the union with a section of officials seeking to oust Secretary General Wilson Socion. The court yesterday issued orders stopping a planned meeting of the organization's National Executive Committee whose agenda was to kick out Socion from the union's leadership and as you can see that is from the Kenya National Union of Teachers headquarters. Those are live pictures from uh, the venue and of course we'll be giving you more details regarding what happened there and if we've got any new developments well be assured that you'll be getting them right here on k24 daily brief and yes as we continue to follow up more stories that make headlines we're also interacting with you on our phone call as well as well as our twitter lines and on social media samuel right do you have uh, anything that is relevant regarding what's been happening today for us right now it has to be relevant it has to be newsworthy it has to be something that is of interest uh, to you and yesterday you remember that conversation that was going on online about the can i call it a ban or an advisory from ezekiel mutua of on uh, wamlambez and wamnyonez right. right about now we are joined uh, by way of phone 
We're joined by way of phone by Ezekiel Motua uh, from the Kenya Film and Classifications Board to just tell us what exactly informed his line of thought in as far as this is concerned. Uh, Bona Motua, thank you so much for joining us right here on the Daily Brief. Kindly tell us what exactly informed uh, your recent uh, directive on uh, the two songs, Wam Lambes, Wam Nyonyes, and Tetema 2. Okay. Um, it was informed by the law, first, because the lyrics are dirty, obscene, and even though they are coded and therefore our decision not to ban, yeah. uh, we believe they should not be accessed by children. I think there's a principle in law called the watershed period, and it is meant to pre protect children from exposure to harmful content. The words in those two songs are dirty, mm -hmm. they are content. Uh, the watershed period principle says that uh, in Kenya it is between 5 in the morning to 10 in the evening. Yeah. Within each period, uh, any content with uh, language or things that are meant for adults should not be aired. Now, when it comes to public performance, there is no watershed period. Is that suitable for children or not suitable? Right. So what we did is we want to restrict them to places that are frequented by adults and not children. I think uh, the bars and the clubs will uh, survive. We don't want our children in schools to be singing to their mothers to ten marriage. It's, it's, uh. uh, it's obscene. I think it's not something we can encourage. Let the children be children and grow up more upright. I mean, it is shameful to see, uh -huh. uh, you know, nonsense like Wam Lambes becoming like national anthem yeah. or greetings in public meetings. That kind of idiocy is what is taking the country in the wrong direction. Because what happens, yes. we start uh, glamorizing evil and immorality. We start having a catch of anything called breaking the law with impunity at every segment of society. And then we wonder what happened. Where is there corruption? Where is there crime? Because we start with these things that break our moral public. So those songs are stand restricted. They are only allowed to play... Uh -huh in places where, in entertainment places where children cannot access. Uh, Mr. Mutua, That's what we are saying. We do not ban them, but we are restricting them to bars and clubs or entertainment places which are not frequented by children. Mr. Mutua, if you may but share, why do this now and why only those two songs? We've had others that have been interpreted to be rather offensive. So why zero in on this two? We, we do one thing at a time. I do, first of all, and it's never too late to do the right thing. There is a lot of consultation between uh, government agencies. We are not a prosectorial body, so we don't just take action because a song has been released. Uh, we follow our mandate. We are the agency uh, corresponding mandate or jurisdictional uh, mandate. We have to speak to Communications Authority of Kenya, mm -hmm. the DCI, uh, the police and prosectorial department. Essentially, it's a long conversation, and we are a legal body, so you don't just happen and, and ban because a song has been released. And you've got to also to have evidence that it has actually violated the rights of children in line with the Constitution. Uh -huh. So um, we banned it when we banned. That's it. And oh, our and, action and is based on the law and after consultations with other agencies. Fair point, okay. Bola Mutua, ah, but uh, last but not least, what would happen if uh, I choose to use Wam Lambes, Wam Nyonyes in a public forum? What would happen to a politician if they decided to use Wam Lambes, Wam Nyonyes in a public forum? Let them go ahead and do it, and then we will talk when they have done it. The law is the law. There is no law for small boys and another one for the big boys. So one thing is, we are the body that is mandated to determine the suitability of the content. We say it is not suitable for children. Mm -hmm. And can uh, play it, you can play it, you can sing it however much you want. You can, can play it in the bar the whole night or in your private, uh, uh, you know, premises. We are not interested in what adults can access. We are not, uh, your adults can take poison if they so wish. But the government has a right to protect children, you know. That's a right. If you close to the, your children in a house and you think that to butcher them, you break that house and come in. It's the duty of the government to protect children. And I think, why do you, why you sound so irresponsible? Is it for the purpose of debate? Because I think uh, we were clear. 
children, children, why are you anticipating that uh, the public or adults will decide what we are saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, I believe uh, the Kenyans are sensible, and the message we are sending is their lyrics, the message, the wording, the content is dirty, it's obscene. Watershed period is very clear. It says any content with, uh, with scenes or language intended for adults. We analyze what was that one Mlandel thing. It's a derivative from a dirty word. And we don't want our children to grow up uttering that word in public or swear words and such. Okay. So let us bring up our children in a more upright uh, uh, you know, way by ensuring that once Kenya Film Classification Board has alerted the consumers that uh -huh. this content is not suitable. We shouldn't have a debate as to whether people break the law. And okay. it is our business to protect adults against themselves. Okay. You want to take poison, go ahead and do it. You want to feed your children with your mlandes, go and pick them like a hit. It's your business. Well but done, Amutua. We did with you. Thank you so much for joining us right here on The Daily Brief and for indeed uh, sharing most especially your line of thought when it comes to this directive that you gave. And indeed it is one that has elicited mixed reactions across social media platforms. Anyone would then wonder why only Wamlambez and Wamnyonyez, yet we've got Pekejeng, we've got Juala, we've got uh, others that have been done before. So why this too? And uh, of course it has formed quite a lot in terms of urban hype, not only locally, within the region and beyond. We've seen international acts actually get into the vibe as a bandwagon effect and actually join into all this uh, shiksha. So it will be interesting to see how this uh, plays out. And I wouldn't be surprised Ezekiel Motua probably could have danced to it one way or another during a public event. He never knows. Right. He could have danced to it. But we are asking you a question. Do you agree with uh, Ezekiel Mutua's uh, sentiments when it comes to his directive on these two songs? That is Wamlambez, Wamnyonyez and Tetema. Do you agree with this gentleman? Do you level with his line of uh, logic and thinking when it comes to these uh, two pieces of art so you can share that with us using hashtag k24 daily brief at k24 tv at sam w Njoroge and at shiksha arora all right thank you very much sam Njoroge, for that of course it was good to hear from abona ezekiel mutua on why exactly the ban now a year later but anyways we'll keep having that conversation right here on hashtag k24 daily brief remember answer uh, to the question of the day right now which is do you agree with dr ezekiel ezekiel mutua's decision to ban these two songs and consider and call them offensive well moving on to the news that are making headlines today now all members of the national council of churches of Kenya are meeting in Limuru to try and resolve leadership wrangles within the council. Now, the transition crisis at NCCK deepened after the chairman accused the general secretary of trying to divide the church. Now, Archbishop Timothy Ndambuki wrote to Rev. Canon Peter Karanja ahead of the extraordinary committee meeting opposing the introduction of other agenda outside the pending dispute on the circumstances under which Karanja's successor, Chris Kenyanjui Kamau was recruited two months ago. Right, moving on to other stories that are making headlines, especially when it comes to uh, the health department, where a malaria outbreak in parts of Baringo and Pokot has so far claimed 10 lives. The situation has been made worse by the volatile nature of security in the area, as well as bad blood between neighboring com communities rather over boundary issues of Capedo has made access to health facilities facilities difficult for residents with many forced to travel more than 150 kilometers to get treatment even as medics dispatched the county government and the Ministry of Health have also been forced to use armoured personnel carriers to access the patients. Baringo Governor Stanley Kiptis has appealed to the national government to beef up security along one of the most dangerous roads. Now, a few questions that have been arising regarding that, um, you know, especially we are in 2019, so why now? We've got the resources, we've got uh, the medicines, we've got treatment, we've got all the precautions with regards to malaria, so why 
is it that we're not able to actually treat this disease and why are lives lost? Now moving on to the next where Third Way Alliance party leader Ikru Okot has faulted Kunyaga governor and Waiguru over a social media post that claimed that the Punguza Mizigo bill was rejected by Nyeri County Assembly yesterday. Now speaking after presenting the bill to the Laikipia County Assembly, Okot uh, sought to clarify that the bill was only introduced in an informal gathering and was yet to be taken through the normal bill procedures. He said it was curious that some politicians have started fighting the bill with some members of county assemblies claiming that they are receiving threats from a section of leaders. Waiguru had tweeted that Mount Kenya region was fully behind the BBI recommendations and went ahead to laud the county assembly Nyeri for allegedly rejecting the bill. Nyeri County Assembly Speaker John Kagushia also clarified that the bill had not been discussed by the Assembly. All right, so those are a few of the stories that have been making headlines and of course we'll continue talking about them, we'll continue having conversations around those particular top stories. Well, for now, taking you directly to Kisumu County where we've got our reporter Baraka Karama on standby and he's going to be giving us the latest from where he is today. Uh, good morning, Baraka. What's happening where you are? Uh, well, uh, Shiksha, good morning to you. In fact, I'm not in Kisumu, but uh, I'm in Sierra County. And uh, to be specific, uh, I'm uh, just uh, within uh, 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 the compound of uh, the Sierra County Assembly. And today, uh, the 43 members of uh, the Sierra County Assembly are expected to debate uh, on the Punguza Mizigo uh, Amendment Bill uh, that, of course, was uh, uh, presented by the Third Way uh, Party Alliance uh, uh, Party Leader. Uh, uh, Dr. Ekuru Okot. Remember, Dr. Okot was in Kisumu last week. Uh, uh, he made a stopover on his, uh, 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 after touring uh, the Nandi County Assembly. And of course, uh, he uh, made a stopover at uh, the Juakali area to popularize uh, his uh, bill. Actually, he was uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, talk to the residents uh, on reasons as to why he is... Uh, is uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, to uh, present that particular bill. I remember this particular area, Siaya uh, County to be precise, is uh, the political backyard of uh, the opposition chief Raila Odinga, who has been on record uh, saying uh, that uh, saying that uh, people should reject uh, the Punguza Mizigo bill. Actually, Raila was uh, in Siaya uh, County in Game Constituency two weeks ago uh, during uh, the burial of uh, Mama Eva Donde, the, ma the mother uh, to the former Game MP Joe Donde, and actually he. Uh, his stand that uh, the people of this particular area should not support uh, uh, the Punguza Mizigo bill. And uh, uh, remember, he's uh, been uh, uh, championing for a referendum, and, and of course, he, he said that uh, the people of this particular area should wait for the recommendations uh, that uh, will be made by uh, uh, the Building Bridges Initiative BBI. Uh, so, today, the 43 members of the County Assembly in Siaya are expected to, to uh, debate that particular bill. Of course, uh, it will be interesting to see uh, how the, de the, the, the debate uh, will uh, uh, carry on, considering uh, that uh, this is uh, the political backyard of Raila Odinga. And of course, uh, we expect uh, that uh, the MCAs should uh, take uh, a stand as far as uh, that particular uh, bill is concerned. Uh, remember, uh, Dr. Court has been going around uh, the country, various county assembly, just to try and drum up support uh, uh, for his uh, particular uh, for this uh, particular initiative. So at uh, this point in time, just allow me to get reactions and comments from one of the members uh, of the County Assembly on what we expect today as uh, uh, they prepare to debate on uh, that particular bill. Uh, just uh, welcome. Of course, uh, we'd like to know, as uh, one of the MCAs and, uh, of course, a member of uh, the legal committee at the Sierra County Assembly, what do you expect today? Because of matters, my name is Lena Dutino, real member for Central Lego. Because of matters political, geopolitical, and uh, matters political in terms of patterns, yes. I expect a no resolution. Yes. We went for public participation, yes. and uh, the one thing at personal level, why I'm going to say no. Yes. We gave the open matters uh, referendum debate is matters, but uh, as matters tethered on direct democracy, where express participation of the people is expected. Yes. The people of Sia let us down. In Alego Usonga, one of the venues, only two people came. In Bondo, yes. four people came. Yes. To me, they have denied us 
the, 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 the principle of, of no, 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 no representation uh, without consultation. Yes. But at personal level, I'm going to vote it no because people never came to instruct us. Yes. But in general, I know because of matters your political and matters... Uh, matters tether to that, yes. members will, will say no. Not that the document is yes. bad. Yes. At personal level, as a human rights defender, this is one of the documents that would have been good for the people current and the people future. Yes. But because of those other considerations, yes. it is going to fail. That, that's what is unfortunate. Yes. So at personal level, I support it as a human rights defender. But that is a Suriero. The son of Uriero. But as an MCA, because I am at the assembly because of the people, mm -hmm. I cannot represent them because they did not consult me yeah. adequately. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, get uh, reactions from uh, the county assembly speaker, Honorable Jojo Kode, just uh, uh, to give us a brief on what we ex uh, expect today. Of course, uh, people were expecting uh, Dr. Kuroko to be here today. And uh, you were supposed to debate the bill. Of course, like uh, he mentioned, uh, you did a public participation which was poorly attended. What do you expect today? Uh, firstly, uh, the role of the county assembly is to provide forum yes. for the members of the public to come and uh, give their views. Yes. Whether they come or not is not the business of the assembly. Yes. It rests with them. And I also want you to know that it doesn't start and end at the public participation forum. Yes. Because we also provide opportunities within the newspapers yes. that anybody with a view on a matter under consideration by the assembly yes. should give their views through memoranda yes. to the county assembly. So if you miss to give us your view through memoranda, you miss to attend the function or the forum, then you've missed out. Yes. It means you are in agreement or, uh, or you, it's not your business. Yes. Whether uh, the sponsors of this bill were to be here yes. today or not, yes. uh, I am not aware. Yes. And there's no requirement, statutory or constitutional, that they be here. Yes. Actually, I heard the sponsors speak in Nyeri yesterday, yes. and they said that the Sierra County Assembly has been advised yes. to reject the bill. I think that is very unfortunate, yes. and um, they need to withdraw that statement. Yes. Because they were saying that he has not even been given a chance to present yes. the, the bill. Yes. There is no provision anywhere where a sponsor of this particular bill should come and present it. Yes. In fact, time started running the moment it was submitted to the assemblies. Their coming is something that is optional to them, and it cannot stall yes. the process. Yes. We did what we could, because when we received it, we expeditiously published it in the newspapers, and we called for, we gave notice yes. for people to give their views yes. and also attend. Yes. Himself, or the team that sponsored this, never even sent a memorandum. Yes. They didn't even come, and we did it twice. Remember, we did it first uh, last month, and then there was an order of the court that we stopped the process. Yes. We did it again on the 20th, last week. There was no memorandum, there was no communication, and even if there was, we have not seen it. Yes. So that is baseless, very unfortunate, and I don't expect it from him. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, Shiksha will be uh, getting uh, more details uh, as soon as they uh, kick off uh, that particular debate. Actually, it's supposed to uh, kick off maybe in uh, less than an hour's time. And of course, uh, we'll be giving you an update as to how the debate uh, will be going on. Like uh, he mentioned, uh, he has uh, condemned uh, the statements uh, by the Third Way Party Alliance leader saying that uh, the members of uh, this particular assembly uh, were uh, told uh, to reject uh, that bill, of course, uh, that uh, a statement coming from uh, the county speaker for uh, the county assembly of Sierra Jojo Kode. So that's it. Uh, we'll be getting more details as soon as they uh, kick off uh, the debate uh, here at uh, the Sierra County Assembly. Back to you, Shiksha. Thank you very much, Baraka Karama, for that update from CIA County. And of course, still on the Punguza Mizigo bill, uh, we're going to be getting a word. We're going to be hearing from the Third Way Party uh, Alliance Secretary General, that's Frederick Okango, later on, and ask him a few questions regarding the same, where yesterday, uh, the leader Ikuru Court he actually faulted Kirinyaga Governor Anne Waiguru over a social media post that claimed that the Punguza Mizigo bill was rejected by Nyeri County Assembly. So yes, We'll be getting his reaction as well to that. Well, for now, we're taking you back here in Nairobi where we have our reporter, Dennis Matara, of course. This is to do with the Kenya National Union of Teachers headquarters uh, where 
Today morning, looters were said to have broken into the officers vandalizing. And this comes after the leadership wrangles in the union with a section of officials seeking to oust Secretary General Wilson Saucyon. And good morning, Dennis Matara. What is the latest from where you are today? Good morning to you, Shiksha. This is usually an area with a flurry of activities, not offices right now is uh, full of uh, teachers who've come from various parts of the country. They claim they've come from Embu, they've come from Kirinyaga, from Kisumu, purposely just to make sure they are there. Secretary General Wilson Sosion is out of office. And of course, all this is an issue that has been wrangled, whereby they wanted him out, claiming that he has been a nominated member of parliament and now uh, so remember that he was scrapped off the teachers list uh, by TSC and now they are saying that this is the time that they needed another leader. Uh, earlier on in the morning there were chaos here and of course they, they, are, they, are, they are allegedly they are saying that uh, some of their doors to the NAT offices were broken into but we cannot uh, exactly confirm that if anything was stolen or if anything was done in there. But what we can confirm is that right now there are a number of police officers who are camped just uh, outside the door of uh, the NAT offices. Just slightly, the camera will just pan to one side. There are a number of police officers who are camped here. They are packed with a lot of tear gas canisters. Of course, this is with, in case of any eventualities. And uh, they are assuming that in case there are chaos, this will be one way to just to clear them out. But of course, I will speak to one of the teachers who is saying that he is a National Executive Council member from EMBO. And uh, he has come all the way just to make sure that Socion is out. Just tell us exactly what is happening. Why did you come all the way from Embu to NAT offices? One thing. Let's uh, start with your name. And uh, where one, you what I've said, I'm Joseph Fatikadume, yes. and I'm the executive secretary of Kenya National Teachers Embu branch. Yes. And we have come all the way because we are not happy with the way Shoshone is learning this union. And the union, our union has got a constitution, and it has got the procedure of doing things. Uh, if he has called anything, it must be mandated by the National Executive Council. Mm -hmm. We have come to realize that Association is running the, his own show. What he wants to do for the union, he does it without consulting the National Executive Council, as he is mandated by the national, uh, by our constitution, not the constitution. Let me ask you something. There was a planned meeting for the National Executive Council today. Yes. And apparently, uh, Association cancelled it yesterday in a press conference. Is the meeting still on? What is happening? Let me first of all say the meeting is on. But one thing I want to say, Sosioni did it very bad because when he called that meeting, they had sat as the National Steering Committee of eight people. Eight people. Mm -hmm. They sat, they mandated the Sosioni as the Secretary General to light a notice of a meeting of the National Executive Council so that they can come and discuss issues that are, that are there in the Kenya National Union of Teachers. But then we have wondered why he has cancelled that without the mandate of the Steering Committee. That is one thing, and that is why we have come to know why can he cancel a meeting which was supposed to, he was supposed even to light minutes today. Then, he goes then to, uh, to court, to seek for court orders. And my question is, and that is why we are asking ourselves, how can somebody write a letter to invite people to come for a meeting, then after realizing that it is uh, uh, realizing that there will be something banned on himself, he goes again to get a court order. How can you get a court order over a letter that you have written yourself? We even want to know in this court. Just another we question. Want to know. Another question, yes. sir. Uh, the, we understand that uh, yesterday ordered the offices to be closed for the not of your members to this go home and do that. Happen. Is that happening? This that is why we are saying so Sean is learning the soul as himself. Because how can he make a decision of closing the offices? We have never under such a situation. It's not a public it is, this is not a public holiday. It is an official day. And actually, let me say this. In Embu, I have not followed his on that. And we are found that we shall not take his on that anymore. In Embu, the offices are already open. So when he closes our offices, and we want to come and know exactly what is happening in our, in our union, it is very, very absent. And we are feeling aggrieved 
as members and officials of the union. Now that the offices are closed and there is no one at the offices, now who are you addressing to right now? Ah, what we are saying is, let me tell you, what I want to say is, the national trustees are there. Once anybody else decides to do anything, national trustees, we have mandated the national, can, they can come and take the office. We have even mandated them to come and open the offices and then we go in. Uh -huh. So we have the national trustee because our constitution is very clear. So do you plan to have another, maybe an acting uh, secretary general? Of course. Today, 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 let me tell you, my brother. Today is when we are going to install an acting SG. As we wait for the annual delegate conference, for the elections to take place, because our constitution is very clear. All right. Yes. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. That was very strong words. Of course, they are clarifying and, of course, insisting on this one point that they are planning to have a new uh, secretary general by end of day. Of course, that is something we will wait and confirm. And, of course, there are a number of issues that they are raising, saying that he has been, a, a one -man, he has been running a one-man show at NAT offices. But that is something that, of course, we will wait and see what uh, the outcome will be. And, of course, we will see if the offices will be open uh, later on and if at all the meeting is happening, where exactly that meeting of the National Executive Council members is happening and the outcomes, the, 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 all the, the things that probably they will uh, decide will happen. So from NAT offices, that is along Fangano Street uh, in Nairobi, I take you back to studio. Shiksha. Thank you very much, Dennis Matara. Of course, he'll be giving us details on if that meeting by the National Executive Committee uh, is going to be happening or not. Later on, we'll be finding out details about that and many more stories that we've been covering. We'll be back after this short break. Well, don't go anywhere. It's going to be, we're going to have a lot lined up for you right after this break.